Hello again. Uh, my name's Rob Foster, and I am a generative AI enthusiast. So um, if, if this is your first time um, seeing the videos, uh, uh, welcome. And if you're coming back from my previous two videos, which is um, intro to using LangChain and um, calling into a large language model, as well as intro my intro to um, retrieval augmented generation, welcome back. So I'm going to post video or video links to the um, to the previous two videos below. Uh, be sure and check those out if you haven't. Um, a lot of the stuff we're going to be covering in here um, is learned skills up to this point. So we've we've reviewed or we've learned um, a lot of basics up to, up to the point of finally learning um, retrieval augmented generation. And um, this is just kind of finalizing that and bring it on, bringing it on home. Um, so, what we're going to do, just a little bit about the demo um, or the, the the code we're going to be writing here is we're going to be building a question and answer robot or bot um, for a uh, an RFP. And um, in video two, we actually used RFPs from the state of Tennessee's website, um, and I'll show you that here in just a second. But same thing, um, we're going to basically use an, a publicly available. RFP RFP just to have some content to query. Um, we're going to essentially chunk that into document into document chunks and then load it into a vector database where we will query it and pass it to a large language model. Um, so um, I, the, the cool thing is that I've actually boiled it down to uh, six easy steps. So we're going to go through each step um, one by one and explain exactly what it does. Um, and at the end, you'll have a, a Q&A answer bot that you can, uh, you can use to query your own documents with. So, jumping into the um, to the to the state of Tennessee website here, I just wanted to review a couple of things with you. Um, this is the website here. It's uh, where, where I got the RFPs. Uh, so I just Googled, uh, I, I live in Tennessee. That's why I'm using the Tennessee one. Um, but I just Googled Tennessee request for proposals. And this is what I got. And, and there's a bunch of RFPs here that you can download and um, you respond to if you've got a business that, <laughs> you know, the state you want to solicit to the state to, to, to do things. But um, I'm using it just as part of this demo. It's just publicly available um, RFPs. And one of the RFPs that I, I found was um, it's a 62 page RFP and it's um, basically for nurses aid testing uh, where the states want state wants to find a vendor that can come in and administer tests for nurses aids um, pretty awesome stuff um, but it's it's enough content to where we almost need to load it into a um, into a vector database um, to, to be effective or to be efficient in the way we pass it to the large language model. Now, in demo number two, um, I've got some some funny diagrams here, um, all of which, by the way, this imagery was generated with generative AI. Um, so I just I, I went in, uh, I used MidJourney um, to to generate these, um, and I basically said I want some uh, hand drawn looking cartoon images in blues and greens um, that uh, I can represent this topic with, and it gave me a bunch of things that I could uh, I could use. So these are just three of the ones, and I'll, I'll go down to the next one uh, to show that. Anyway, a um, little off topic there, but. Um, in demo number two, in the previous video, um, and where we left off was what we did um, to take this. Um, we actually used this this proposal in that demo, um, and what we did was we essentially just copied. We opened in Python code. We opened this document, and then we essentially read the contents from this document, and then passed all of that text into a prompt into the large language model. So we we opened the document. We created a prompt that said, summarize this document or something like that. And then we passed that prompt and the contents of the entire document into the large language model and said, here's the context. It's the entire document. Now do something with that. Um, and that was a, a pretty large amount of tokens, if I remember. I think it was, you know, 20 or 30,000 tokens, um, which can get quite expensive if you start, you know, if you think about we just asked it one question and it responded with one answer and we used that many tokens to do that. Um, so you can do it that way. It's not the most effective or most efficient. I mean, it's very effective, but it's not the most efficient. Um, the way we're, what we're going to do today is we're going to go with this approach down here, which is very similar. 
But what you do is you basically, you can upload your document. And then when you read your document, what we're going to do is we're going to create chunks of the document. Now, by default, we're just going to create a, each page is going to be a document chunk. So we have 62 pages in this, in this RFP. Um, we're going to have 62 chunks of this document. And then what we have to do is convert each of those chunks into these things called vectors. And what a vector is, it's basically just a, um, um, it's almost like a matrix of numbers that um, a vector database can use to represent that content in a way that makes it easier to retrieve when you ask it a question. So what we're going to do is each page is going to be a chunk, and then we're going to convert that into a vector, which is basically just something the, the vector database can understand. And then when we ask the vector database a question about this content, it's going to return to us only the relevant pages that are relevant to our question. So if we're asking for the schedule of event, events, which we will, um, it's only going to respond with us, you know, with that one page to where that content exists. Or if it goes across multiple pages, it'll it'll return multiple. Um, but that's really kind of what that's going to allow you to do. And then once you get each of those, those contents or each of those pages that you want to send in, you'll only send those relevant pages in. Instead of sending 62 pages of content in, you might send three or four pages to get that. And what that's going to do is it's um, it's basically going to um, make the, the model much more cost effective, first of all, because you're not going to be sending in the whole document each time you want to ask a question. But it's also going to let it scale uh, to uh, to a, a, a larger degree. Um, these large language models can only scale to so many tokens per minute. And the more tokens you pass in, the more it's going to impact scalability. So if you can reduce that load, then this is the way to do it, um, is, is by using this, um, this technique to, to actually get into there. So... Um, one of the things that I wanted to cover before we see the demo is just the um, the, the models that you'll need to make sure are deployed. Um, I'm using Azure OpenAI, but you can use this. This is applicable in pretty much all of the the model um, hosts. Um, so I'm going to be using GPT-4 Turbo, and you just need to make sure that's deployed, and then some kind of embeddings model. So the way the embeddings are actually created are with these um, large language models. Um, all of them have libraries to do this, and the one we're actually going to be using is the text embedding three small. Um, and so that's that's the one we're actually going to be using to create our embeddings. Um, I know before we really just in, in the previous demos and the previous videos, um, we just had to make sure we had a large language model. But since we're doing vectoring with these with these document chunks, you need to make sure the large language model and your embeddings model is also um, deployed out there. So let's go back to Chrome and let's just take a look at this. Um, so I'm going to open up my document. So I'm going to drag and drop my document into um, this web page here. <clears throat> and it's going to load it. And what this is doing while we're while we're loading this up, you can see it's running. Um, going back to here, we uploaded the document. It's actually going to do this whole top piece for us. So it's we uploaded the document. It's broken it into different pages or chunks. It's converting those into vectors and then loading those vectors into the vector database. And so when I uploaded the document, it's just going to do this prep work for us. Now, to be honest, this is not really um, generative AI, if you will. This technology has been around a lot longer than um, generative AI overall. Um, and what it, um, what it is, is the vector database is going to be loaded with the content so that when we go and search it, um, we can just go search it. We don't have to do this every time. We can kind of preload that with the contents or um, you can load it with contents way before you even start querying it. And it's just, it can just live out in a database. So I think about... Um, like right now, for this demo, we're just looking at one document. But let's just say you had a bunch of manuals or something out there. You might have all of your HR policies that are that are stored out in a vector database that you can use to then let people ask questions about, I don't know, let's just say paternity leave or you know um, long-term disability or, or whatever benefits you want them to ask about your, your HR or talent policies. 
um, that are that are out there, um, you know, you can preload these vector databases and then just use that them with the techniques we're going to learn today. But today we're just loading them on the fly as we upload a document because we're just looking at one document at a time. But that's that doesn't have to be the way you do it. You can preload it. You can do whatever you need to do. Um, it just so happens that we're just preloading or we're loading a document on the fly here. Okay, we can come back here now that we've we've. Um, got it up and uploaded and everything, um, we get this text box and I'm just going to type in a question that I can ask about my document. So the question I'm going to ask is what is the schedule of events? Okay, and once it returns, you can see that it actually returned, what is it like 12 or 13? Yeah, 13 schedule of events. And um, these are just the the dates that are the due dates for things that come up in the RFP. And if we go into the document, we can actually see that that's actually in section two. It's in a table um, in section two, schedule of events. And there are 13 of them and it pulled all 13 there. So it just reformatted them in a list for me um, in the um in the, the item here or in the in the response. So <clears throat> that's the demo we're gonna build. Um, and really it's um, it, it's it's not complex. Um, it's just six steps to get it going. So let's jump into the code and, and let's get started. So jumping over to VS Code, um, what we've got here is we've we've got um, the same libraries we've been working with in the past two demos. So we've got OpenAI, we've got LangChain, and then LangChain OpenAI because I'm using Azure. Um, and what we've done is I've added two extra libraries here. So one of the libraries is PyPDF, which is going to allow us to, to read the PDF um, file. And the other is ChromaDB. So um, I'm using Chroma as my, um, or ChromaDB as my vector database. And it's just an open source vector database <laughs> that's free. And um, it runs on your laptop and um, it, it just works great. It's great for testing. Um, and as you moved into more of a production basis, you can obviously use Chroma, um, but I see others using like Redis um, on the Azure platform, or there's there's many, many options here. Um, this isn't a new technology. Again, it's, it's just something that you need to decide as you move forward, you know, do you want to use Chroma? Do you want to use Redis? Do you want to use, you know, what what is the, the vector database solution you want to use and just use that. But the way you use it is all the same. Um, just like you, the way we're going to use Chroma is the way you would use any other vector database. Um, so one of the things that um, that I wanted to also call out here is as we get into um, to the code, um, in looking at our imports, um, you can see I'm importing an object here called Retrieval QA. And this is the object that's going to actually allow us to um, reach in and, and query the vector database. It's going to pull the relevant chunks of the document out and then send them off to the large language model um, to be processed. So all of that stuff is in a library. You can write this code manually, but or you can just use the Retrieval QA object to do it for you. Um, so it's really handy. It's really easy to use. Um, there's also the embeddings object that's new, the chroma objects that's new, and that's pretty much it um, in, in terms of like new, new objects here. Everything else has been covered in the previous demos, and it's pretty straightforward. So want to call out, we are using um, GPT-4 Turbo. Um, that's, that's the language model we're going to be using. So let's get into step one of our six, six steps here. <clears throat> what we're going to do to load the PDF is we're going to use this concept in lane chain called document loaders. So in the previous demo, what we did was we actually opened the PDF with a PDF library, and then we read each page into a string variable. Well, um, lane chain actually makes that a whole lot easier that we, we wrote, you know, eight or 10 lines of code to do that. It's not complex, but um, what you can do is you can use your document loaders in LangChain and then just call the load method. And what that will do is just simply, it'll read the document, it'll load it into a, a document object for you. Now, it also does the chunking part for you as well. So if we run the code, oops, let me stop Streamlight from running. <laughs> So if we run the code, <clears throat> I've got a little breakpoint here, and I want to highlight this, this document object. Right. So I'm loading this document, um, this, this nurse's aid testing PDF into the document object. 
And then when it loads, I want you to see the chunks. Let's just expand this out. So this is the document object in the, um, in the variables window. Um, you can see that each chunk right here um, is a page in the document. And since there's 62 pages in the document, there should be 62 documents, 62 chunks in here because we said that we're going to chunk this up by page. <clears throat> so that's really how you do it. So all of the chunking and stuff is done when you load the document with a document loader. So see, that wasn't too bad. Now there is, let me stop this from running and close my window here. Um, step two is creating the embeddings and it's equally as easy. So in the embeddings, when you create your embeddings object, all you have to do is essentially reference your um, embedding model that you're using and you create it just like you would a large language model. So you have to pass in the base URL, you have to pass in the key, you have to pass in your deployment ID um, and then an optional chunk size. And we're not going to cover uh, what chunk sizes are right now, but um, basically you just set up your embeddings. Um, and, and this just says, hey, I'm going to use this embeddings model to create my embeddings from those document chunks. Now, um, step three is actually creating these embeddings from those document chunks. So what we have to do is we have to convert each document chunk into this three-dimensional numeric thing that the vector database is going to understand. And the way we do that is we create the vector database, okay, from the chroma object that we declared up here. So this, or we imported up here. So this is the lane chain vector stores chroma. Um, we're going to <clears throat> create the vector database from the document chunks. So this is the document that we loaded, right? And then we're going to tell it to say, use this embeddings model that we created up here. So use these Azure embeddings to embed this document into the vector database. Um, that's all you have to do to create your embeddings. That's, that's really, it's one line of code. Now, there are some, some lines here that I, I you know, it's, it's not relevant to what we're doing, but Chroma, because it runs on my laptop, um, it will cache sometimes cache this uh, this information. So what I'm doing, what this lines these lines of code do here is it basically just loads a blank item into the list and then clears everything out of the um, of the vector database. So it's almost like a a delete all for the vector database. So I can start fresh every time I upload a document. Um, but really, that's that's to to create your vectors, um, your chunks, and your vectors is is really just one line of code. Um, so that's that's pretty straightforward there. Step four, um, so now that we've got our vectors created from our chunks, we need a way to retrieve those relevant chunks from the vector database. Now, the vector database has this thing called a retriever. Um, and what you can do is you can call from the Chroma vector database, the as retriever model, um, and that's going to set up a um, an object of retrievers that will allow you to query into that vector database. Now, there is an argument here. Um, which is a search argument. And it's basically saying the K equals six is saying, give me six up to six pages of relevant content at a time. You might need to up this or down this. I find six is a um, is a good number to start with. Um, if you need 20, use 20. Um, just make sure that the model that you're using, um, make sure that the um, the open AI model that you're using is can support a context of that size. So if you're using like GPT 3.5, which has an 8K context window, um, you may be able to pass in four pages um, instead of 30 pages, right? So um, you just have to watch that search thing and tune it accordingly to whatever you're trying to um, trying to accomplish with your, your little chat bot here. Um, we're going to use six for this. And now what we do, step five, pretty much copied and pasted from all of the other examples is we have to create the language model reference. Um, this is really just the, um, this is where we're referencing um, GPT-4 Turbo for the large language model. Um, and then we're going to use the retrieval QA object to create a new chain um, of events that happen that will allow us to it will allow us to use the retrievers to retrieve relevant document chunks. 
Okay. And then pass those chunks into the large language model. So here's our large language model. Um, it will return the source document. So if we had more than one document uploaded here, you might want to reference which document this content came from. So we're going to return those, even though it's just going to return one document. Um, and then we're going to use a chain type type of stuff. Now we're not going to get into the different types of, of chain types here, but what this will do is it will, um, let's just say we ask a question and it returns six, six, uh, pages back to us. Um, all it's going to do is it's going to stuff all six of those pages into the prompt and then pass those in as context. Um, the other ones react different ways here. The other options, which are, um, refine, map, reduce, and map re-rank act a little differently, but we're just going to do stuff and just know that if the retriever returns six pages, it's going to stuff all six of those pages. If it returns three pages, it's going to, it's going to stuff all three of those pages into the prompt. And that's it. That's the six steps to get started uh, with doing this. And then all you have to do is call the invoke button, pass in your question and then, and then it's going to just run. It's going to basically do all of the work for you. So it's going to get the chunks from the uh, from the database, uh, from the vector database. It's going to pass those chunks in with your question um, as a prompt uh, to the large language model, and then return the results. So let's just run it right quick, and let's just watch that and see what happens. The other code that I've got down here is basically just a just a loop. Um, just finish running that. Um, so it's just a loop that will basically loop through until I type quit and then just allow you to enter questions in about this document. So it's just a, it's just going to let you ask questions over and over again. Yep. So here it is. Enter your question. What are the, what are the schedule of events? So now it's just going to run that retrieval QA from chain type. It's going to get probably page four or whatever page that was. Um, it's going to pass that in and then and then return the results to us. So hopefully it'll return a list here um, that matches the list that we had uh, in the web page. Yeah, so that's what it did. It pulled return 13 of them. Um, here's your schedule of events. And um, there it is. So, um, very cool. So you can see, I actually only made one request. Um, I passed a total of 4,000 token, 4,427 tokens in, and this whole thing cost 14 cents to run. Um, so that's a pretty insignificant number. Um, when you look at asking a question of a 62 page document, right? So it's, it's, um, Fairly easy and trivial to uh, to get set up and running. But that's really the six steps that I wanted to cover with you um, on here, um, you know, which are, uh, again, going back to um, going back to the code. Um, the six steps that we, we reviewed are loading the document, okay, um, setting up your embeddings, creating your embeddings from your document chunks, set up the retrievers, step four is set up the retrievers, and then step five, set up the language model, and then step six, create a Q&A model that will basically run the chain of events that will give you back the relevant information that you're asking about the document. So I didn't want this to be too long of a video. I think they, you know, as we get into uh, longer and longer videos, it's hard to, uh, to keep up. I wanted to simplify it and boil it down. But in a nutshell, I mean, that's really all there is to um, doing retrieval augmented generation. And this is a real deal. I mean, this is not stuffing and faking it into a, into a single prompt. I mean, this is a real deal. We're using vector databases. Um, you know, we're, we're creating chunks and embeddings. And, um, and then we're using LangChain to actually make all this and tie all this stuff together to, to call into the large language language model. Um, so I hope this has been helpful to you. Um, I'm going to come back in the next video and talk about um, scalability and um, uh, uh, protecting cost and really helping to um, to maximize your ability to scale the, the 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 chat bot as well as control cost to this because you know even though this only costs 14 cents or you know almost 15 cents to run you can imagine as you get hundreds and hundreds of users you want to control those costs as much as possible so um, in my next video I'm going to cover uh, controlling costs and and scalability of of large language models with retrieval augmented generation and so hopefully 
hopefully um, I'll come back to you in another week or so with a, with another video. But I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, I had a tremendous fun time uh, creating this uh, this content and this uh, this example and, and all of this um, this stuff to to bring this concept um, into uh, the hands of more people because I do think it's pretty easy to get going and then once you start extending it and start putting it to your own use, I think this gonna, is going to open up a lot of doors for you. So. Um, until next time, thank you so much, and uh, we will talk to you really soon.